Hey guys, it's Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. This is another uh, edition in our Nutrition Pillar series. Uh, today we're going to talk about hydration. It's not like the most sexy or interesting topic. It'll probably be a quicker uh, podcast. But I think it's a really important one, especially if you're after performance, um, but also body composition goals as well. And we'll talk about how those, they can kind of work hand in hand. So uh, number one, I just want to give some like general recommendations and also just to kind of talk about why hydration is important in general. Uh, I am not, admittedly not like, the, again, the best person for advice as far as um, science kind of nutrition stuff, but this is just going off my 13 years of experience and then also, again, if you've been following along my own weight loss journey, I've lost over 100 pounds of body weight and kept it off. Uh, and, you know, these are kind of the things that have helped me personally. So, number one, hydration is going to be very important for your health. Obviously, a lot of our body is made up of water. Uh, what's cool about like things like our in-body scale over here, we could actually kind of track how hydrated we are, uh, and that's actually going to be kind of have a positive impact on our lean, our lean mass, uh, as far as like when the in-body reads reads your reads the reads your uh, body fat percentage. It's going to count that water weight as uh, as a lean as lean uh, tissue because it's obviously not fat tissue, and the more hydrated you are, also it's just going to kind of be able to read your muscle that much better because uh, it uses electrical impedance. So that's a benefit as well if you're kind of tracking with an in-body or something like that. Uh, just for general health, just making sure you're alert, your performance is good, you're going to prevent cramps, and you know it's going to help with your muscle contraction. Um, if you are dehydrated, it's going to really severely limit your performance quite a bit, your cognitive ability. So being hydrated is going to be very, very important. A lot of times when we kind of, sometimes we can confuse hunger with thirst. Uh, so if you are also are, are struggling to, and you're trying to be in a calorie deficit, also just make sure you drink fluid uh, first. That's a kind of a good rule of thumb as well. Sometimes we confuse hunger for thirst, so uh, make sure that you're also fully hydrated. If you are uh, somebody who really struggles with hydration, a good habit or a good tip is you could have about a liter of water. This bottle is exactly a liter, so that's why I got these. You get this, these from Amazon. There's obviously many different types of water bottles. I'm not going to really get into like the kind of BPA, kind of plastic, kind of debate and things like that. But in general, uh, you want to, you know, staying away from kind of plastic and stuff is probably a good idea. Uh, but that's a little bit outside the scope of this podcast. We're just going to talk about like kind of more hydration, electrolytes, and kind of water in, in general. So uh, if you could have a liter or even just like a glass of water first thing in the morning, that's always a good idea. Because uh, a lot of times when we're, when we're, we're obviously fasting at night, we're sweating a lot, we're, we're breathing. Uh, so we're going to be perspiring while we sleep. We're going to lose. That's why if you ever weigh yourself like before bed and you weigh yourself in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you're going to be a little bit lighter in the morning. You kind of call that, what our wrestlers, we used to call that like floating weight. You might float two or three pounds. So we want to start to replenish that water that we lost throughout, throughout the night. So a good rule of thumb is having like a half a liter or a liter kind of first thing in the morning. Uh, even before like you get your coffee and things like that, I think it's really good to just focus on hydration first. Uh, and you know, as far as general recommendations, you know, you can look at precision nutrition and other sources that are a little bit better advice than me. But in general, if you're like a woman or a lighter male that's like under 200 pounds, you know, anywhere from like two to three liters of water is probably a good place to start. If you're a bigger guy, 200, 200 pounds or more, uh, or maybe you're just a high performing athlete that's sweating a lot and maybe it's hotter, it's in the hotter months, you know, that gallon a day or four liters a day is a good recommendation as well. Now it's important not just to have water by itself. So obviously you want to drink when you're thirsty, you know, listen to your body, things like that. Try not to confuse hunger with thirst. Uh, those are some general recommendations. Uh, again, we talked about having like one of these things first thing in the morning. The other thing that's going to be really important is electrolytes. So a lot of us, especially uh, we're, for whatever reason in our culture, a lot of times sodium and salt is like kind of demonized. And there are some, you know, kind of exceptions to this. And there are people who are like on high blood pressure or have some like kind of heart conditions and things like that. You know, sodium might be something that you can you talk with your doctor. Again, I'm not a doctor, but where you have to watch out for, there are some kind of medical conditions. But in general, uh, especially if you're a high level if you're a high level athlete or if you're lifting heavy, uh, it's really important that you have uh, some sodium and some electrolytes, especially around your training time. So before and after, you want to make sure that you have enough electrolytes in your system for the training, and also you want to replenish those electrolytes after you kind of sweat and perspire. You're going to be sweating out the salt. You're going to be sweating out those electrolytes. So it's really important. How much salt do you have? Uh, so Stan Efferding has a lot of great recommendations on this. You can check out his channel as well. Uh, you want to, your, your tongue will kind of tell you if it's too salty or not salty enough. So just kind of salt to taste. Uh, something like an iodized salt is a good idea because a lot of us are also deficient in iodine. Um, so that's really important to use like an iodized salt. You could also use like a, there's a lot of people kind of argue of the sea salt and this and that. 
But in general, I think just to be safe, most of us are deficient in iodine. It's going to help with your thyroid. Uh, so in general, I would recommend just at least if you want to use other types of salt just for taste purposes, I think the iodized salt is a good rule of thumb just so you can get that iodine in it as well. Uh, now, this is kind of like the one, uh, I don't want to say the one time, but besides like a whey protein shake and maybe some creatine and things like that, I think uh, using electrolyte supplements are going to be very helpful. Uh, so the one that we talk a lot about on our channel is a noon tab. Uh, and specifically, what I want to talk about today uh, is using actually this noon energy. This has caffeine as well. So I'll usually use about two of these uh, for like a pre-workout. Um, also, by adding caffeine to like uh, carbohydrate solutions and stuff, it's, if you, again, better person to learn this stuff from is probably like a George Lockhart. Uh, he works with a lot of UFC fighters and also Stan Efforting. Uh, but by adding caffeine to like uh, some of your kind of carbohydrate drinks and things like that, this could also speed up the absorption process. Uh, I could be kind of mistaking the compounds a little bit, but if you have like glucose combined with fructose, um, so that's why some of these kind of like post-workout shakes and stuff, uh, talk about kind of having some orange juice like post-workout, uh, you know, having some of these kind of powders that have gl glucose powder or glucose tabs. So having glucose with fructose, I think with sucrose or dextrose, I, I forget the third one, combined with caffeine. Uh, you're going to absorb the stuff that much quicker. So that becomes really important if you're like in a sport where you're cutting weight, like a wrestler, uh, like a fighter, uh, like a power lifter, if you, if you cut weight for power lifting, which we don't really recommend unless, again, you're trying to go for a national ranking, maybe qualify for uh, USAPL nationals or XBC finals, uh, or like you're trying to break an all-time world record or like an American record, um, whether that be you know in the all-time world record or for like a drug-tested record or something like that. Uh, so those are some situations where like that kind of the combination of carbohydrate and the electrolytes become that much more important. Uh, so that's a little bit outside the scope of this podcast, but just kind of worth mentioning by adding the caffeine, uh, it's going to be a good, give you a little bit of a kick. There's a lot of benefits for like fat burning and increased performance. So uh, the caffeine in this is through, through a, a natural source of green tea extract. Uh, so I would kind of, this is a more mild, again, it's only 40 milligrams of caffeine per tablet. Um, and again, so that's a noon tab. It comes in these tubes. These things will dissolve. Uh, and you can kind of throw this and drink. If you also, for like a, a meat situation, I might crush these up. Uh, so I might have a noon tab or two uh, before each lift. I might crush it up and just kind of digest it like right before I start warming up for my squat, right before I start warming up for my bench, and right before I start warming up for the deadlift. So this is going to be a little bit better. I feel like I never kind of have that crashing feeling when I have these versus like a pre-workout. Uh, so I like to recommend this as a pre-workout supplement. It also has some vitamins C, uh, B6, B12. It, magnesium is also important uh, mineral for a lot of different things, contractions and things like that, and just overall health. Uh, sodium. So this has each tablet has 360 milligrams of sodium, so decent amount. So I usually have two pre-workout. It has 100 milligrams of potassium, which is also important uh, for electrolyte balance uh, and just like muscle contractions and things like that. Uh, it's not a big amount. So the other thing I'm experimenting with, and I learned this from Chris Bell, uh, I think that there's a time and a place for each, but as far as, if you want the ones with the caffeine in them, uh, the noon energy is good. If you want to just uh, just do noon for just the, the hydration part and just the electrolytes, that's good too. This is something that's newer, but I really am enjoying. It's a little bit of a higher dose. Uh, it has 1,000 milligrams of sodium, which I believe is what Stan Efforting recommends, like pre-workout, so this is great. It has the high, it's double the amount of potassium of, of noon, a little bit more than twice uh, the amount of magnesium as noon as well. So as far as kind of like bang for your buck per like serving, uh, the LMT Recharge is also kind of like a keto friendly option. It's uh, You get to get an unflavored or citrus salt flavor, which I like. Um, this is excellent. Uh, this is kind of a newer company. I have no affiliation with them. Um, other things, that, so this doesn't have the vitamins that, that noon has, so that's, but I don't think, you know, the B6 and stuff's gonna really make that, that big of a difference. It has some chloride in it as well. But you know, it's got 15% of your daily you know, uh, recommendation for, um, for magnesium. So this is gonna be great. Um, since I've been using Noon and, and the LMT, like I haven't really experienced any type of muscle cramps. And uh, right now, even like, even during the hypertrophy phases where I'm doing like sets of eight and things like that. Uh, so this is excellent. Um, Again, you want to use like as needed. So if you're a higher level athlete, if you're, if you're in a hypertrophy phase, if you're doing a lot of skill work or conditioning, which that may not be you if you're listening to our podcast, more powerlifting specific. But um, but yeah, this is great stuff. So I highly recommend this LMT powder. Uh, so I kind of I like to use both. Uh, it just depends on the situation. So I might use like the noon pre-workout. I might use the LMT post-workout. 
Uh, this is going to be also really effective if you're doing like a sodium load or something like that. So this is good because I could really measure like exactly how much I'm getting. So sometimes like in a sodium loading situation, like right before like a, a water cut, um, you can obviously just measure exactly how much sodium you need. So if you take if you want to take in like five grams of sodium uh, or five thousand milligrams per day, I can use like five of these packets, for example. So also when I'm replenishing, I know exactly how much kind of sodium I'm going to get in as well. Uh, so yeah, I think that a lot of us too we struggle to get potassium in. Uh, so another one of the thing, other things I'll do to get potassium in that's important. I'll do like a spin and shake a day, and I'll usually have a serving or two of Brussels sprouts. Those are also high in potassium as well. Um, I know Stan Efferding is a big fan of just having the spinach, you know, do the spin and shakes. Um, there's definitely other foods like uh, like a potato. I'm not a, right now. I'm restricting my carbs a little bit more. I'm only having rice, but if you have uh, some potatoes, a white potato is also a great source of potassium. So those are going to be important for electrolyte balance as well. If you are doing a little more low carb diet, like a keto type diet, for whatever reason, uh, for weight loss or just calorie restriction or just your lifestyle, if you feel like you get cognitive benefits from it. I think the electrolyte balance is even more important because we're not because carbohydrates are going to hydrate your body. Uh, they're going to hold a lot of water, so if you're not getting those carbohydrates in, uh, it's going to be even more important that you kind of supplement with and use it and salt your food. So don't be afraid to salt your food. Definitely make sure you're having electrolytes, uh, you know, pre and post workout. That's going to be key. Uh, the more intense or the hotter or the bigger you are, you can have you want to have a little bit more. Um, you know, get some water. But so you could do like the whole like gallon of water thing. I like to do like I like I have two of these I'll just kind of have one pre and post workout and I might fill these up again that way I'm getting them around a gallon a day uh, so just use whatever methods that you can to kind of help increase those habits uh, the one thing I'll say and we'll talk about sleep probably in the next episode make sure you don't, you don't want to have too much water too late in the day because uh, that could also disrupt your sleep so that's kind of like the one caveat uh, for water uh, I would definitely kind of err on the side of having most of the water earlier in the day that way like you're kind of not kind of waking up and having to go to the bathroom and things like that. So uh, I think that's basically it for hydration. Um, like anything else, um, if you're really dehydrated, uh, making sure that you're not really having a lot of fat around your training time, it's going to kind of slow the absorption down. So just make sure like if you do have some fat, it's going to, it's going to be more moderate, uh, focus more on the electrolytes, the water, and maybe some carbohydrate. You could use the combination of some of these supplements and different types of carbohydrate to uptake the hydration that much quicker uh, but i think hydration is something that's really overlooked and especially if again the hunger thirst thing if you have more water in your stomach you're just going to feel fuller uh, so it's going to be important for when you're restricting your calories as well uh, so it's going to help your performance it's going to help you lose more weight it's going to help you feel better a lot of times when we get those headaches when we're dehydrated it's going to decrease our performance so hydration is key it's often overlooked, so make sure that you're drinking your water and, and uh, taking your uh, your electrolytes. That's going to be really important. So um, that's a really quick episode for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you need, if you have somebody that's struggling with their water or their hydration, uh, definitely share it with them. Please give the podcast a five star review. It helps other people find us. Definitely check out the links below. Uh, and until next time, guys, stay strong, and we'll see you soon.